Now what has satisfied this nafs? What has satisfied this nafs? Everybody else was running after stuff. What is the first and most important gift Allah gives this nafs? Irji'i ila rabbiki. Return to your master. Return to your master. That's the, that's the thing that was dissatisfying this nafs. That nothing else satisfied this person in their heart. Just remembering Allah satisfied them. And now Allah gives them satisfaction beyond even remembering Allah. Return to Allah. In this there is a profound reality in the life of a Muslim who makes tawbah. Or in the life of anyone who accepts this deen. When you return to Allah Azza wa Jal, you face a lot of difficulty. Whether you are a Muslim who is in sin, and they decide they want to change their life and they want to become obedient to Allah, or you are a non-Muslim who came into a con- to contact with the teachings of this deen and accepted this deen, as soon as you become serious about this deen, and you're serious about returning to your master, and really living like you're a slave, then you face a lot of problems. Your family gets in the way, your friends get in the way, your own old habits get in the way, your society gets in the way, everything around you gets in the way. Maybe even the way you used to earn your money wasn't halal, so you have to lose your money too, maybe you have to lose your business too, you definitely lose your friends, you always you, you suffer, the, the relationships and family suffer, the marital relationship can suffer, the relationship with your kids or your parents can suffer. All these problems because you did what? Return to Allah. And all of these things are connected with being dissatisfied in life, aren't they? But when you are cut off from all of these things, and you return only to Allah, you find a tranquility you never found before. You know, I've, I've met brothers before whose life was all about partying. They would go to clubs and drugs. Everything that would, they would think would bring them pleasure in life, they tried. They tried it. They did it. And then Allah brought them to the deen. And they said, man, after you return to Allah, that is a high I've never felt. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. There is no, you know, at the end of any of these activities where you try to please yourself or you indulge in these sorts of things, right? This Hellenistic, you know, lifestyle where you just live for pleasure. At the end of all of that, they are so, like, these are the people that commit suicides and stuff. Like, they can't, they're never satisfied. They're never done. They can't get enough. And they think it's going to just bring them to an end. But they become enslaved to their own habits. Right? They're not even, they don't even feel free. They say things like, I can't quit. What do you mean you can't quit? Like somebody has a, it's a master over them telling them you can't quit. And that's how bad it's gotten for them. So you become free from all of that and finally you become satisfied. So, irji'i ila rabbik. Radiyatan mardiyat. Two adjectives that are so incredibly beautiful. One, pleased. Pleased with who? Allah. Why is that important? In this surah, did Allah speak about the one who's not pleased with Allah? The one who re- first who rebels against Allah and causes corruption? Then the one who Allah, when He pro- takes the sum risk and calculates it, He becomes displeased with Allah? Now this nafs, because he's truly returned to Allah, he's just happy, just content with Allah. The world can go left to right, the sun can rise from the, from the west too. He'll still be content with Allah, this, this slave of Allah. Then even more mardiyya, ism maf'ud. And you are pleased with, meaning your Lord is pleased with you too. You are pleased with Allah, and Allah is pleased with you. Return, you are so happy with me, and I am so happy with you. Allah is saying, subhanAllah ta'ala to this. What an amazing gift. But that's not the only gift. He gives another gift after this. He says, فَدْخُلِي fi ibadi." Enter then in the midst of my slaves. You know, the first gift was in the company of who? Allah Himself. Return to your Lord. The second gift is the company of the other slaves of Allah. You know, this believer read about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He read about Adam alayhi salam. He read about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. And he read about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He read about these people and he said, man, I want to meet them so bad. And what does Allah say after he lets him meet himself? He says, فَدْخُلِي فِي Enter the company of myself. Join. You're part of this group. You can go in. There's no exclusive access. There's no... Yellow tape, no security guard on the doors that you no no access here. This is first class only. Prophets and messengers only. Nope. Fadhuli fi ibadi. Fadhuli fi ibadi. And in comparison to that, what is last? What's the last thing he mentions? Wadhuli Jannati. Enter my Jannah. The, in comparison to these gifts, Allah put Jannah last. SubhanAllah. <laughs> now the last comment about this Jannah. Allah didn't say Wadhuli Jannah. Enter paradise. He says Jannati. Enter my paradise. Enter my Jannah. Meaning Allah is 
you know, almost as though Allah Azza wa Jal wants to show him what special arrangements in Jannah He has made for this one individual person. He's not even talking to the Ummah at large. This address is individual. Fadhudi, irji'i, wadhudi. Individual, individual, individual. Allah individually addresses the person who enters Jannah and says, Come, let me show you my Jannah that I've given to you. Wadhudi Jannati. Enter my Jannah. Subhanallah. You know, it's one thing to say, Enter your Jannah. But Allah says, enter my Jannah. Subhanallah. What a difference. What a difference that makes. Subhanallah. So at the end, this iltifat, I want to again reiterate before I close. This transition illustrates that Allah is forcing us. He's forcing us. When you hear these words, these are second person. Who's talking? Allah. Who's listening? You and I. He's forcing us to picture ourselves in that paradise. He's forcing us to picture ourselves in that paradise. May Allah Azza wa make us these slaves of Allah that reach tranquility in this life. May Allah Azza wa let us take advantage of the profound days and the acts of worship that He highlighted in the beginning of this surah. May Allah Azza wa forgive the shortcomings we have in our ibadat, the way our mind wanders in the salawat, the way we, we skip our prayers because of sleep and laziness, the way we waste our nights in, you know, in, in entertaining ourselves or wasting time. May Allah Azza wa protect us from, from all of that and make us amongst His beloved slaves that enter into His company, into the company of His beloved slaves, and into His, his special paradise. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil-ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.